I'm pretty sure I did say 104, though. I did say three. John, okay, John's giving me the, okay. All right, this brings us to item 11L as a recommendation to approve the proposed Collier County state and federal legislative and administrative priorities for 2023. John Mullins, your Director of Communications, Government, and Public Affairs will present. For the record, John Mullins, Director of Communications, Government, and Public Affairs, and in your packet today is the proposed 2023 state and federal legislative and administrative priorities. Now this document was uh, produced in conjunction with your lobbying teams, with county staff and leadership, and with your individual input, and I appreciate the comments and suggestions that were received from you. Now this is not an exhaustive list, but a snapshot in time. So any issues that come in the next several months, if we cannot derive direction from this document and addressing them, they will be brought before you for your guidance. Uh, the issues listed in this document are in alphabetical order, not by order of importance, just so everybody knows. And selected issues from this document will be presented by Chair McDaniel at the legislative delegation meeting on December 6th here in this room. Please note the venue change and Troy is still celebrating. Uh, given you were previously provided this document, uh, I am happy to just take any questions you may have on the myriad issues listed therein. The only thing I would ask is if and when you get to a motion to approve, I would ask that the chair also be authorized to draft any correspondence in relation to the issues contained therein. How you all doing? Everybody okay with it? You're, you're going to make some comments at that event right oh absolutely uh, I mean, well I'll, I'll try to keep my comments to a low roar and reflect what the board's uh, priorities are and I so mean, I on. on attending but when I saw that you were making comments I just assumed you were speaking on behalf of all of us I so am. it's not we don't we all, all, all don't need to like get, get a gold star for all speaking at the podium or anything right but it'd be valuable to attend I assumed I and, looked at the agenda was, as was mentioned this morning uh, the proclamation you adopted on behalf or for senator uh, or president Pasadoma will be presented to her formally at that meeting and just to let you know too rep Rommel uh, and his staff coordinate this meeting again this year and they have always been kind enough to place the chair at the beginning of the agenda so when the meeting starts at nine o'clock on December 6th we will probably be at 905 so okay. if you're coming you want to come early great okay and I'd be happy to do it uh, Commissioner Solis yeah, one, one of the uh, priorities, let me get back to it, is uh, long-term transparent national flood insurance program reauthorization. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, a great priority, uh, especially the transparent part. <laughs> if we can add some transparency to that. Uh, but I just wanted to, to add, um, out of recent personal experience uh, and for people that may be having to work through flood insurance after the storm there is an office of the flood insurance advocate within FEMA that I didn't know about uh, and their sole job is to help the policyholders with issues with FEMA and I was amazed at how effective they were and I, I, I we ought to if we get a chance let people know that that's out there because I just happened upon it by chance I mean did anybody does anybody did anybody know that that was out there because I didn't and it turned out that it was a great thing to to use if, if so maybe we could broadcast that somehow that if anybody's having to work through unusual issues of some kind with FEMA and well not FEMA but the National Flood Insurance Program that they contact the advocate. I think my staff is probably listening to this meeting right now and we'll look up the appropriate information and contacts and make sure that that is put out on our social media channels. Could be very very helpful to people. Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely and thank you for sharing that and, and just as an aside anything that that any of us happen to run into semi happenstancely I mean we I know we do uh, several things with the agricultural community and and the Ag Commissioner's office with with different programs that are in fact available and we provide that through the, our website to the community as well so but if anybody runs across uh, something that you think is a value let us all know 
So thank you, Commissioner Sleese. All right, I'm gonna call for a motion for approval. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the the uh, legislative priorities be you have a be be approved as as uh, submitted. <clears throat> and a comment, Commissioner Saunders. Um, yeah, I was going to actually make a comment after the vote, but uh, I'll make it now. Um, uh, the governor and cabinet is scheduled to meet on December thirteenth. Thirteenth, and um, on that agenda may very well be the. Uh, final approval, if that final approval is even needed, uh, by the governor and cabinet for the Veterans Nursing Home location in Collier County. My plan is to be there for that meeting uh, because we have, obviously, we have to have representation there. Uh, that's also a county commission board meeting day. So as um, soon as that item is finished, I'll call in for the meeting. But I wanted to just alert the board that. Uh, that if that occurs that day, I'll, I will miss the first part of the meeting. Yeah, and we probably won't have an agenda for that meeting until seven to ten days out from it, and then we'll know if it's on there or not. And just to kind of add to uh, the commissioner's comments, as you well know, there is no statutorily driven process on site selection. And after the 2014 site selection process where we went from one to seven, the next year a few counties that also felt the burn uh, introduced some legislation to try to put together a formal process. That legislation never got traction. So still to this day, there's not really a formal process in place. Now, thanks to Senator Pasadomo and the General Appropriations Act last session, that language was put into the bill that prompted FDVA to do a site selection uh, process and to report the recommendations by August 1st to the governor and cabinet. And on July 13th, they submitted that letter and we were recommended to be next, followed by Marion County after us. Now, FDVA since then has said, given the fact that there's no real formal site selection process, they may not necessarily need the governor and the cabinet to ratify this selection. Now, should that be the case, the governor's office has already pledged to work with us to make sure next steps are done appropriately, that we have formal recognition of being the next site uh, in their eyes, and then we'll help with the uh, state application process, of course, for construction funds that would follow that in the future once the design of the facility uh, has been done. Uh, so right now we're waiting to see, A, if they place it on that agenda for the cabinet on December 13th, and if not, then we will work with the governor's office to take the next appropriate steps. And there you are. Been moved and seconded for approval. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign, same sign. So moved. Thank you, sir. And with a little personal privilege here, I would just like to thank Commissioner Taylor, Commissioner Solis, uh, your enthusiasm, your advocacy, and input over the years for this legislative program. Any successes that we have enjoyed over the last several years are in no small part due to your participation. So thank you. Item 11M is a recommendation to review the proposed Rock the Red USA event as requested by Florida's Voice and accept staff's recommendation that the event should be held at Paradise Coast Sports Complex. Um, as discussed when we were setting the agenda, the Florida's Voice has found a new location for this event and will not be utilizing at this time a county park, but contained in this executive summary is a dialogue regarding <clears throat> Uh, events of certain size, including those with amplified sound, and um, in accordance with direction given by the board uh, before our, our summer recess and events following, that we will attempt to take these types of events and move them to the sports complex. Tanya may have some additional comments she wants to make, but uh, the threshold that we're looking at here is events that have um, more than 500 participants and those with amplified sound. The sports complex is um, not only situated in a location that it's not impactful to residential, which some of our other parks are um, surrounded by residential neighborhoods, but also is, is laid out for proper parking security and uh, can house events of this size. So with that, I'll hand it over to Tanya if she has any further comments. Good afternoon, commissioners. For the record, Tanya Williams, Public Services Department Head. I also have Alima Edwards, your interim parks director with me as well. Um, as the county manager has so, st uh, she's hiding right behind. Oh, there she is, she's hiding, right. hello. She's right there, commissioner. 
<laughs> um, as the county manager so stated, um, we, we do have a difference, obviously, in what uh, Sugden uh, Regional Park can accommodate by way of parking as well as participants in comparison to your Paradise Coast Sports Complex. Um, just for the record, Sugden Regional Park has 300 actual parking spaces that are available. Um, that it precludes any the use of any lawn areas that we may deem needed for an event. Uh, public restrooms are adequate for the way the park is designed. Um, Alima can further explain how Sugden Regional Park is, is really designed to be used. It is a passive recreational park along with your water craft, um, sailing, and water skiing. Um, so in regards to being able to accommodate an event that could see upwards of 1,500 to 2,000 people, that park is not designed for that type of event. No, it, do, do we need to have that discussion today, or do we need to have that as a discussion when we're, we're managing our parks plan for coming up? So uh, this is actually a follow-on to guidance that we got from the board. Uh, we are here today specifically because there was this application, but now generally to be sure that the board is in favor of this approach. And if you are, then we will simply apply that on applications going forward. They'll still follow the process going to the pay rab. And as requested by this board, these larger events or those with amplified sound will bring to the board as a consent agenda item. But since it was already on the agenda, we just wanted to take the opportunity to be sure that this is heading in the direction the board was looking towards pushing the large events out towards the, the sports complex as it is able to house them and utilizing Sugden and the other regional and community parks for those smaller community events that don't disrupt the surrounding neighbors and businesses. Okay, very good. Commissioner LaCastro. Amy, actually, after I pushed my button, I think you sort of summed it up. I just, I just want to make sure that our guidance is clear um, to the PRAB, which is, um, you know, the bigger events. And because I also do hear from citizens that they like spreading the wealth. And, you know, what the message we don't want to get out there is, oh, God, now everything the county does is going to be at the sports complex. And so we got to really be clear, that, make sure that our messaging is clear so people don't oversummarize and think that's our hidden goal or something. Like you said, you, uh, working it into the equation of locations that we use, but there are things that are really good, you know, home good, home cook and community events that are, that are great for uh, many of the other locations as we've had, you know, even before we had the sports park. So I think we're, we're all paddling in the same direction but you know as Commissioner Saunders always says right words matter so you release one sentence and then all of a sudden me social media blows up oh everything's at the sports complex and then what will follow because we've already heard some of that too is oh they're pushing at the, the sports complex because now they're going to charge us a higher fee when we used to have it in the Donna Fiala Park for free and now all of a sudden we have to pay this big fee you know those are the things that we just want to get out ahead of because we, we've already had a couple of those but then we headed it off at the pass and you guys have done a great job but you know that would be just be my only comment you know we just make sure how, how we advertise these things and that we're not doing it for a financial thing Absolutely. um etc yep Thanks. we'll we'll make sure that we work on that messaging thank you mr saunders uh, thank you i i agree completely that uh, large noisy especially noisy uh types of events should be at the paradise sports park we we want to make sure that we're utilizing that uh, to the greatest extent possible and also as you said that that eliminates the problems in the neighborhood i don't want you to to have kind of a hard and fast rule it says here the proposed events transition are those expected to exceed 500 participants so you take a, a the uh, the new park in commissioner uh, mcdaniel's district uh, you take the north collier park those parks given certain types of activities could hold more than 500 people and so i think that i think um, we would have to kind of rely on staff's judgment but i think if you have a situation where you know it's going to be a tremendous amount of traffic a lot of people noisy uh, and it's easier to contain it in terms of uh, security and garbage collection and all of those things um, I agree 100 percent I, I just if somebody comes in they say that, that they have 501 people and they want to be over at the, at the uh, new park in, in uh, district 5 I'd hate for staff to say well we can't do it unless you right. eliminate one person um, so that, <laughs> that's all but I agree completely with what you're trying to do we're in agreement with that. Yeah. Commissioner Taylor. Uh, first of all, I want to thank 
your staff uh, for what you're doing because this is very, you're the, the face of our government to the people and it's a very difficult balancing act and more and more as we grow, these events are going to come up because people want to do this. But the reason there are potholes in the, uh, the um, baseball fields, Commissioner LaCastro, uh, is because we haven't charged enough. <laughs> we haven't charged enough for our facilities mm -hmm. and that's a big problem. So again, it's a balancing act that, you know, we, we have to maintain what we have. It's so critical. And I know you're hard at work doing that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Well, my, my global question is, is uh, you know, there, the, the agenda item was for a, for a facility to be used in one and we're shifting them to the other. And my question is, do we want to have this come back as an actual discussion for advice to our pay rab and for our staff to be able to making recommendations to the pay rab or, or just do this today? I I'm going to look over at Jeff, but we're just looking for direction because it's still going to follow through the pay rab. And again, these larger events, anyway. we're still going to bring them to you. So if there were some disagreement, then we're still having that ability to have that conversation with you. Okay, very good. Commissioner LaCastro, one. Yeah, I'll just say to, to respond to Commissioner Taylor's comment, I, I don't want to get into a debate on why, debate on why we have potholes, but um, we had burned out lights that sat burned out for a year in some of our parks, and that wasn't because we didn't charge enough. That was um, neglect by um, our county not doing a good enough job, and Commissioner or, and um, County Manager Patterson w would agree. She's doing a much better job, and I'll, I'll commend com uh, Dan Rodriguez as well. I mean, now you have a checklist of things that we're doing at parks so that we don't have to have citizens to tell us we have a broken water fountain um, for a months that we actually catch those things on our own so um, I'm not a fan of just saying charge more money so we can buy you know more more dirt for the baseball fields it's a mixture of things so I, I, I don't take exception to what Commissioner Taylor said but I'll just send it on a positive note saying especially to Mr. Rodriguez and I'm sure he represents a bunch of people that are doing it differently but you and I have talked I, I'm, I really am excited about the new things you have put into place, all of you, to make sure that we're being very proactive to, you know, in some cases, we filled all those potholes after the Little League played on, in, on a crappy field, right? I mean, we had these conversations, and then it was like we went out there, on, and our checklist said, um, now we're going to recondition the field. And, you know, the kids could have played on a, a, on a beautiful field, and instead we did it sort of backwards. But I commend all of you that are catching those things. It's not all about soaking citizens for more money. Some of it we have the budget for. So buy the, buy the, buy the lights, you know, um, switch them the minute that they're burned out, and let's have our, our unbelievably great maintenance people catch catch that and not, you know, moms and dads who are sending us photographs of potholes and burned out lights. So, I mean, I just wanted to add that and, and end on a positive note that I know you all are working a, a much differently in a proactive measure so that we catch those things. And we're already seeing notes from citizens and parents who are saying, wow, you know, right? I mean, Alima, the notes that we're trading on that one particular park that sent us a laundry list of 20 things that we, we could fix for about $75, right? And, and you did immediately. So, that, you know, that's my point. So I, I thank you for that. So. Commissioner Saunders, just, do you want to go a again? Quick question. Uh, yeah, I, I, as I was going through this, I had meant to ask you this. It says here that sports complex full day rental is $15,000 for an event of this size. Um, what, does that, what does that mean uh, when you say a, a rental of a sports complex? Because that's fairly huge. And does that mean that someone can come in uh, if it's already not being used, rent the entire park for 15000 Commissioner Saunders, I'm going to let Adrian Moses from the Paradise Sports oh. Complex come up okay. and answer that. And then curious as to what would be included in that. What, uh... Good afternoon. Adrian Moses, uh, Sports Facilities Companies, representing Paradise Coast as general manager. Um, essentially, when we're talking about an event of that size, um, you can't just say you're renting a specific part of the complex you have to take everything. You, we have to provide all of the parking, which means now we can't rent out our other fields, drive ancillary revenues from those fields. Um, that one event has to cover the potential revenue that we could, we, we could gain from if, if we had the facility open for, a, let's say, a lacrosse tournament that would t take up the same amount of parking, but would use more of the actual 
um, individual aspects of the facility. Okay. So the, someone pays $15,000, they have the whole facility. Now obviously we have security and all things that have to be provided. Does that $15,000 fee cover all of their expenses for trash removal and security? And It covers all of their expenses from a um, regular operating uh, procedure for our facility. So um, I had this conversation with uh, my business development director yesterday that's that anything in addition to what we do normally, an event operator should have to pay for that. So th what, what do you do normally, I guess, is what I'm trying to get. So we would typically have, for example, for trash removal, we have two eight-yard dumpsters and one eight-yard recycling dumpster. That covers us for traditional, regular use. If we've got an event that's going to drive a whole lot more trash, that's going to require us to organise more trash removal, that responsibility now moves on to the, uh, the operator. So the $15,000 would cover the cost of the eight, the eight and the eight, but if we need to do more trash pools or have more dumpsters on site, that would be their, their financial responsibility. What about security? Security is always the responsibility of the, um, of the, of, of the event organiser. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm satisfied that this is okay. Somebody want to make a motion? A motion to approve. Second. It's been moved and uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve as presented. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Same sign. Same sound. So moved. Thank you. Item 11N is our, one of our add-on items. This is a recommendation to authorize a budget amendment and accept the state. Housing Initiative Partnership Disaster Assistance Award in the amount of $334,700 to assist eligible Collier County households whose primary residents sustained damage as a result of Hurricane Ian to pay their insurance deductibles and authorize one temporary full-time employee. Ms. Christy Sontag, your Director of Community and Human Services. Thank you. I was going to say Human and Community Services, and I knew that sounded wrong. Is here to answer questions or present. Would you like me to go through the presentation? Briefly, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, well, good afternoon. I'm Christy Sontag, your Community and Human Services Director. The item before you today is to approve the SHIP Insurance Deductible Program. The SHIP Disaster Program is part of the State uh, Housing Initiatives Partnership Program. Each year, funds are set aside from the SHIP allocation in the event of a disaster. Um, the funds awarded uh, for this particular program are part of the $5 million that are set aside annually. Collier County, including the City of Naples allocation, is $334,700. These disaster funds can be used to pay for um, your regular homeowner deductible or your flood deductible. The program eligibility requirements are set by the Florida Housing Finance Corporation and the income, it is an income driven program. It's 120% of the area median income or below. A family of four, that would be 113,160 annually. You must be um, a U.S. citizen, legal resident, obviously a Collier County resident. Um, in addition, the program requires that we cannot assist any property that is assessed by the property appraiser in excess of $458,634. That is a SHIP set aside. Um, they establish that number. Um, it, any manufactured homes we could assist, however, they would have to be constructed after uh, July, or sorry, June of 1994. Again, a ship rule. And we would also need a copy of the insurance adjusters report. And every family who participates in the program has to sign a disaster assistance agreement, um, verifying that they're not having a duplication of benefit. Now, the, this is a quick clarification. Back up one slide. The property value assessment, is that... It, is that for the house like, similar to what we do when we're determining the 50 percent or is it TP, the total land and home? It is the, um, it's how we do the 50 percent. So it's just a, the, yep. for the house and, and above. So if, you you're, if your structure is assessed at less than this and you can qualify. Correct. Okay. The insurance deductible program has some rules. 
Um, as we all know, the flood insurance program has two deductibles. It has for the property and has for the contents. However, in this particular program, we would not allow to reimburse for the content deductible. Uh, payments must be made directly to the contractor. So if the homeowner paid their deductible themselves, we could not reimburse the homeowner. Mm -hmm. So we will be required to ensure that whoever the roofer, contractor, whomever is, um, that they're willing to accept payment from us. Um, the maximum award is 20,000. This is the figure that's in your local housing assistance plan that you approved. Um, of course, you can set as a board uh, any amount uh, call your county or sorry Charlotte County for example um, capped there is at 12,000 um, this is in line with your current LHAP but you as a board can certainly decide if you want to lower that number um, obviously we can't go above it um, but we can certainly lower it if you so choose to um, it's not a reimbursement program and it will require an inspection before payment can be made we do have a third-party inspector that we use here at the county or the county building department. We can accept either of those. We are requesting for one temporary time-limited staff. Um, this would be a grant-funded position. Um, this particular position will help with customer service, processing applications, working with the contractor, helping to get the payment out the door, um, and any other customer service related activities, coordinating inspections, et cetera. The portal, with your approval today of accepting of these funds, will open on November 18th at 12 noon, and it will close November 26th at 5 p.m. That is a Saturday. Um, applicants can make application at callyourflassistance.com or callyourhousing.com. It's the same website that we've used for all of our housing programs. Who picked that timeline on the portal? Yes. Who, who picked that timeline? Uh, we did. We figured, based on um, what happened in Charlotte County, um, they opened for three days, and they received far in excess. Yeah. So we opened it for a week. Um, but if you want us to leave it open longer, we'd be more than happy to do so. Well, I, 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 it's, a, it's a small window, and I, I think you'll, you'll probably have a lot of people coming at you. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know. It just seemed like a very small window. I can extend it. That's fine if that's at your pleasure, you know. So the recommendation is to authorize the budget amendment, accept the funding in the amount of $334,700, and to authorize a temporary full-time employee. Just as an aside, it would, uh, it would make sense that it, it will close when the money runs out, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, it would. And so it, we, you have it open for a week now. Correct. Ten days, whatever that amount. Well, I thought it was a week. And so, um, and, it, and then if, it, if the applications don't come in, then it would extend until the money is expired. Yes, sir. Do we need to yes, add that, per, is, that there. If we're going to close it early, we should extend it if we don't, if the money's not expired. Okay, I can. I mean, if I receive... 2,000 applications at 20,000, I would expect to exceed 334. But yes, to your point, exactly. And we can let the county manager make the executive decision about the extension based upon what you're sharing. I'd be happy with that. Okay. Any other questions? I'm good. Make, make a motion for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Did we presume, uh, approve as presented? Any other discussion? You didn't hit your light. I didn't, but, you know, I was just looking at the bottom page of the qualifications checklist, and I just need our wonderful clerk of the court to come up and tell me that she's comfortable with this. I need you to come up here, please, because we have we have not only application documents, we have proof of payment documents for the clerk's audit. Mm -hmm. and and I know you've worked together. Mm -hmm. I just need to put it on the record. We, we do work together. I haven't looked at the actual details of her proposal on the item by item, but you work with finance. Yes, we talked to Susan. And, and we do the post audit before the payments are made for any of these. So. Yeah, no, no, I know you do, but it's just a question that you're comfortable with your standard that's put here so that down the road. We, 
we have been working together very, very well. And if we have a discrepancy, I'm sure that we'll work it out with, with um, Great. Christy. Great. So, so this, is, this is malleable. I mean, we got, you, you, it's not because we pass it today doesn't mean this is, this is it forever. And, and let me say this. We, we do try to work together because I agree with you. The, the one thing in looking at this, it's very detailed. And sometimes when the public sees this, they become intimidated. Mm -hmm. But we can use alternative, some alternative proofs um, and we discuss that. So if, for example, they don't have one piece of paper, mm -hmm. we can try to get there a different way. So even though she's listing these as the initial criteria, we've always worked together to try to make it, as long as we can prove what they're trying to tell them, and we agree in our offices, we use though that information as a substitution. So this isn't, if you don't have this dot, you're out. And, and I think making that clear to the public is, is probably preferred so that they know, even though you are passing this list, um, in accounting, there are documents that can prove the same thing, and you can't always identify what all of those documents are, but we've worked very closely and very well together in the last couple of years, and, and we get satisfied together. So we're covering the taxpayers, but we're still trying to work with each individual. So, Thank Thank okay, you. no, thanks. Okay. Anything else? Oh. Been moved and seconded that we approve as presented. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, same sound, so moved. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. Yep. Item 11-O is formerly 16-A-6. This is a recommendation that the Board of County Commissioners accept an after-the-fact donation of sand and sand transportation and delivery from Stewart Materials and Rapid Trucking, respectively, received by Collier County in advance of Hurricane Ian's landfall in the amount of $2,275.50. And this was uh, moved to the regular agenda by Commissioner Saunders' request, and Trinity Scott is here to answer any questions. Uh, no questions, Mr. Chairman, but the reason I asked this to be withdrawn is, and this is not a big, a big number, the $2,275, but it was a donation, and it came at a very important time when the uh, um, storm was, when Hurricane uh, Ian was on the way here. And I just thought, if, we, if we're going to thank people in this manner, we should put it on the regular agenda, because on the, on the consent agenda, nobody even hears about it. And so I just wanted to uh, formally... Uh, accept the uh, Stewart Materials and Rapid, Tran uh, Rapid Trucking uh, for their th very thoughtful donation at a time of need of our citizens. And that's, that's all. Make a motion. So I'll make a motion to approve it. And I'll second it with the uh, thank you to you because I have a note on this agenda item as well. It's very similar that says let's move this to the top and uh, maybe, maybe even explore future contractual relationships so that as we're going forward, we can, we can, because because that sand got delivered, donated and delivered and got gone, like that, and so um, there, it, it was it was an amazing thing, and I, I I I had a similar note, so I thank you for bringing it up, and I'll I'll pass on to Mr. Stewart our genuine thank thanks and the trucking. The trucking is the largest, probably the largest expense of all. That's the transport. You know, right? I do know. Can I, can I just add something well. as well? Yes. Um, so, but Trinity also too, I wanted to give a shout out to, I know a lot of times, you know, you or Jamie or somebody standing up here and you represent a lot more people, but when that sand was donated, the speed at which you and your team reacted to not only get the word out, advertise it, like Commissioner Daniel said, it disappeared quickly because of the great job that you all did to react, get the sandbags, get the shovels. And it might sound easy, but sometimes that stuff isn't. And you know, we were really under a, a tight timeline, you know, uh, obviously when the storm had changed. So I just echo um, not only thanks for the donation, obviously, but then the way that the um, county te team, and uh, it appeared to be led by you because I was con corresponding with you back and forth. But, you know, I just want to say, you know, thanks to you and to everyone else who, re who reacted so quickly and maybe had a part. And I don't know if this donation just came out of the blue and the, the company just felt, you know, charitable or, you know, there were some conversations that happened, but the overall effect, not only from the donation, but, you know, your efforts and that of the county staff was, um, you know, impressive. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. And, and if, I, if I can, this is the first time that we've done a sandbag program in Collier County. Right. And so we learned a lot and we're, we hope that we don't have to do it again. 
but we have had multiple meetings afterwards about ways that we can improve the program. So um, s phenomenal success, something that our county manager, um, when she was in her prior position, really wanted to roll out. So this gave us the opportunity to do so. As I said, we were able to um, learn from it. And with the generous donation from Stewart Materials and Rapid Trucking, we were able to um, get over 100 tons of sand out to our public. So yeah, thank you really important that uh, that's a that's a wonderful thing so thank you and that was the conversation I had with staff yesterday was um, w w we may be able to take advantage of sand deposits along the way with the proper containment with the proper containment area that material doesn't ever go away now if you just dump it on the ground it will be in amongst mother earth in a short period of time but if you keep it in a proper containment area it stays there forever so we'll have a supply as we're going along to and Stuart materials does supply us with our beach sand were you so. surprised that this um the figure wasn't higher because it was a lot of sand i mean this represents the value of the donation correct yes and i mean and like you were saying you know transiting it back and forth and the workload and everything i mean i was surprised i expected it to be a, a bigger number so i guess maybe we got it at discount we, and i know it was a donation but i guess they priced it at sort of discount rates i expected almost, the number to be bigger i'm almost certain yeah. that that does not include the sand that's it's what just, it's predominantly the transfer you think yeah yes. okay that makes sense the number that's yeah. in here is the number that was provided by the, the organization. Yeah. So. Yes, yeah. that's correct. And, and okay. so, because that's uh, that's ten, twelve dollars a ton sand yeah. just uh, just on the hill yep. for the retail side. So, but it was very nice and it was very effective for those that were able to use it. So. Item eleven P, formerly sixteen A eleven, is. Did we, did we did we vote on that? You moved, I seconded. I don't know. Did I call for a vote? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign, same sound, so moved. Why? <laughs> okay. Item 11P, formerly 16A11, is a recommendation to approve the cooperative procurement and use of the Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority contract number 21 980369. Florida electric transit buses with charging and associated equipment for the purchase of 30. 35 and or 40 foot electric buses for the Collier area transit system. Ms. Trinity Scott, your transportation management services department head is here to answer questions. Good afternoon, Trinity Scott, department head, transportation management services. I do have a quick presentation if you would like to hear it. Yeah, yeah, um, that, 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 yes. So what we are here today is to approve a contract for county staff to be able to purchase electric vehicles from. This contract is de derived from a consortium process from the Florida Public Transit Association Finance Corporation, which is a not-for-profit associated with the Florida Public Transit Transportation Association. They developed a consortium process in coordination with the Federal Transit Administration that would allow for larger buying power to open up the contract um, to all transit agencies within the state of Florida to be able to purchase from. Pinellas County became the lead agency. They volunteered to be the lead agency and they took the lead on competitively solicitating the contract, providing for the purchase of electric buses. As part of that taking the lead, what they do is they coordinate with all of the transit agencies within the state of Florida to say, what are your needs? What size buses? They're not just procuring for themselves. They're procuring based on what we need and what little nuances we may need as far as the buses. The contract components include not only the buses, but also the um, associated charging stations. And with this, um, through the consortium process that was vetted through the Federal Transit Administration, there is a $500 fee for the use of the contract that's paid to the Florida Public Transit Association Finance Corporation, and that is used to support training for transit agencies in the state of Florida. So when our drivers or our mechanics, um, the state of Florida will host training opportunities, whether it's uh, the latest and greatest for maintaining a vehicle, um, 
we are invited free of charge to be able to attend those, those trainings. And so that's what this $500 supports. The fee does not go to Pinellas County, who in this instance is the lead agency. And this is the same process that's used by Collier County that Collier Air Transit has used since its inception. And this is also the same process that's used for our diesel buses. So nothing new with the electric vehicles. The board of county commissioners approved our grant submission back in April of 2020 that included the purchase of two electric vehicles and the associated charging equipment. And that grant award came back before you also for approval on February 23rd of 2021. This will be a pilot project for Collier County, similar to what we have done in the past for hybrid diesel buses. We put these buses, we purchase, we usually purchase one or two, and we actually put them into play in our transit facility on our routes, and we see how they perform. And what I can tell you from the hybrid diesel buses, we had two in our system, that's it. We never bought any more because we didn't see the return on investment for them. How our transit system works could be different than how another transit system works when you start putting these vehicles into operation. So we will collect data and we will develop a cost benefit of whether or not it's something that we want to pursue in the future. So from a maintenance perspective on an electric vehicle, we fully know that we will save some maintenance funds. You don't have to do an oil change on them. We don't have fuel. But we will have associated costs for charging, and so we need to look at all of those components and the infrastructure that's necessary. In addition, the public transit and neighborhood enhancement in coordination with the Collier MPO is beginning the process to determine the feasibility of larger spread implementation of low and no emission vehicles. This is a requirement by the Federal Transit Administration to complete this process, uh, not to go fully no or low emission, but they want us to look at our infrastructure and see if it's something that's even feasible for that. So purchasing these vehicles will give us that data to know if this is going to work within our system. It takes approximately 12 to 18 months once we issue a purchase order for the buses to receive them. The buses are funded 100% by federal transit administration funds, funds that can only be used for transit capital. There's no local match requirement. Just to let you know a little bit about these buses, the charging capacity and range is about 300 miles per charge and it can fully charge overnight. And we have also budgeted in that grant that was um, approved by the board to also purchase a charging station. So what we're asking today is your authorization to be able to utilize the Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority contract to purchase the electric vehicles that were approved in the prior grant in, back in 2021. Commissioner Saunders, just one quick question. Mm -hmm. On average, how many miles do we drive a bus a day? I do not know that off the top of my head, but I, I do hope have it's Michelle less Arnold. Than, I hope it's less than 300. It, oh, so for a route, yes, it is less than 300 typically. But what I will tell you is we do have some routes that are longer, the Immokalee to Marco Island route. However, and it does divert in other areas. So these are things that we want to test the vehicle on and see how long the charge will, yeah. will last. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner Taylor. That was my question. Now, let's just say this goes forward and you've got a charging station. Can you use someone else's charging station? At this time, we can't go to the sports complex and, and charge on that charging station, but we will have our own infrastructure for, to charge at our facility. And if we anticipate deploying more in the future, we would have to look at charging stations depending on how our system operates with it. Based on, based on our analysis, and, and we did have a, a vehicle just for a few days that we were able to test, we fully believe that, that it can get back and forth to the, the transfer station and, and run the routes throughout the day. We don't think that we're going to have an issue with running out of electric. <laughs> so, so you cannot use the charging station at the Marriott Marco Beach Hotel if it's prearranged? So, no, we can't because it's, it's no different than electric. Not every electric vehicle can use every charging station because of the 
inputs? The plug. The plug. The plug's different. The plug. And the amps and and there's yes. Right. The bus but, isn't a Tesla. We're we're doing a new transfer station with the Tiger Grant program in Immokalee. We'll put a plug out there. So if the bus ends up on that end and needs juice, it can plug in. We're gonna probably do in somewhere. Remember on the 47 acres that was at Randall. And yeah. in Immokalee, we had talked about a bus barn, tra cat bus transfer station. Uh, there will be something of those facilities in that area. And so we'll do another one there if, in fact, these things work. Exactly. And so that will all be identified as part of this low and no vehicle emission plan that we're doing. Where do we need additional infrastructure? Is it, and like I said, the first step is, is the bus even viable for us? We've gone through this pilot program before for an alternative ve um, fuel vehicle. And it didn't pan out, quite frankly. So we went back to our diesel buses. So those are all things that we, from a staff perspective, will be analyzing and looking at. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Absolutely. Mr. Chairman, do you need a motion to approve? I, I do, sir, I was fixing to call. I, I will do that then. I move to approve item 11P. Second. Been moved and seconded that we approve the item as presented in the other additional discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, same sound, so moved. Item 11Q is formerly 16F4. This is a recommendation to receive information concerning an agreement between United Soccer Leagues LLC and PARA SFM LLC concerning negotiating rights for a potential stadium use agreement at the Paradise Coast Sports Complex. Ms. Marissa Baker, Sports Complex Manager, is here to answer questions. For the this item, I'm sorry, this item was moved at Commissioner Taylor's request. Yes, for the record, Marissa Baker, Sports Complex Manager, and we are here to answer any questions you may have. Uh, if I may, Mr. Yeah, but you're, you're the one that, you're the reason we're having this discussion, okay. so I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Well, I, you know, I looked at it and it was fine, and then I saw that you, there's a signature required. So then I said, mm, about seven o'clock last night, I said, mm -mm, that's not fine. Because we all received a letter yesterday in our box with an offer to lease or buy the sports park. And I think I'm not suggesting this is even going to go forward. I'm not going to be here to even be part of this, but I think just for business sense of word, we probably should just postpone this until we get our hands around this offer. What's the term of this uh, agreement? So the agreement we have here today is a one-year term where United Soccer Leagues will pay us $75,000 for us not to speak to another professional soccer team. It does not mandate or obligate us to have a future agreement. It just says we have the intention of working together on a future agreement. And, and the county attorney, does the agreement that's here before us have the uh, c cancellation for convenience termination clause like everything else we do? I'd have to double check. Give me a second. No, okay. I, talked, I talked with uh, Deputy Manager uh, Rodriguez about it. The, the contract is with the sports park. It doesn't matter who the manager is. So no matter, so what it does, that's the thing that I learned yesterday. I thought it was the management firm with the United Sport Soccer, but it's not. It's the sports park with United, and the manager could change, it doesn't matter. So it's encumbering something that we may not want to encumber. I mean, that's going to be a, a, a point of discussion. It's a point of discussion, but I, I think in, in the scope of things, we have a lot of work to do on this letter of interest that came to us yesterday. We'll talk about that under commissioner comments. And this particular item, re relatively speaking, I think is incidental to, uh, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a portion of a negotiated, to be negotiated agreement if we ever get there. And right. so I, I, would, I would be hesitant if, if staff believes that this is a good agreement and good for the county and good for the park then i i would this isn't our agreement right no this is an agreement between here at sfm and united soccer leagues so this is just for information purposes. there's no decision to be made here it's just informing the board that the agreement okay so why are we at but there's a signature required that's what got my there's a signature this is required. this agreement is not between the county and it's not with the county 
So it's not with the county or the sports park. It's with the. It's with it's with the. Um, the Paradise Sports Park people, yes, but it's not with us. So is it with the management firm or is it with the entity? The management firm, I believe. It, it has nothing to do with us. I'm not even sure why we're having this discussion. All right. We always tell the staff, don't give the board something they can't make a decision on. This is something you can't make a decision on. It's, it's information purposes. So th this is just informational for us <coughs> that sports facilities company is has been offered this payment not to negotiate with anybody else in terms of having a professional team. Correct. The, okay. The money still goes into the county's operating fund right. as a revenue, but yes, it's between Para SFM and United Soccer Leagues. I, but see it again. Like that, the months. Paradise FM isn't that us? Isn't that the county? No, that is the management company. Oh. No, it's not us. It's okay. Adrian. Your management company may have a hundred different agreements we don't know about. I, I have no idea. This happens to be one they're telling us. This about. is this is what that, they're t that staff is telling you about. Yes. All right, I got a couple of lights up here before you go. We don't, we don't have anything to vote on. You're just letting us know about this. Okay, so at, at the end of this executive uh, uh, this agreement. There's a signature required by someone in the county saying that they agree and accept this arrangement. Okay, I didn't draft the agreement that I'm telling you that we can sign it or not sign it. doesn't make any difference. Well, that's what, it, that's what the executive well, uh, summary said, but that's well, not what this says, this legal document. I, I don't know what to tell you. We don't, it's, not, it's not with us. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. If, if, I understand we're not, this is not an agreement with, with the county. First question, does this have to be done today, or can we do it in, 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 in December, at our meeting in December? Now, I realize that we're, we're not doing anything, but I'm asking that question. Is, that, is it critical to have this signed by your organization today or tomorrow, as opposed to giving us an opportunity to evaluate this? Because the county attorney uh, isn't very familiar with the agreement. It's on our agenda. It is raising a question as to whether this encumbers our facility in some way. Um, I believe we probably have a termination for convenience clause in our agreement with the operating company for the, for that. So if that if this created a problem, I guess we could terminate that agreement, and then uh, that would automatically, I guess, terminate the other agreement. But m maybe we just need to have the county attorney tell us what we're getting I, I'm into. I'm familiar with the agreement. Now that I refresh my recollection, it has nothing to do with us. And yes, we we can terminate. Okay. If, if we want. So we don't really need to discuss this any further. No, if, if the issue is if the board wants to consider selling the sports park, all right, and I know we're months, months away from that discussion, we can terminate the agreement we have with the management company. But, uh, well, let's get to that point. But that's that's point down the road. This, yeah. is, this okay. has that's nothing to do yeah. with the we're price the of the chicken. Now. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. so I make a motion we move on to the next item. <laughs> I'm all over. Can I just let, erase all these comments? No, I have a comments? question about the soccer, about what we were initially talking about. This this agreement? Yes. Yes, not the sale of the sports park, which is something totally Good. separate. We'll get there. And um, so so this soccer agreement, is it is it my turn? Yes, sir, it is your turn. So the soccer agreement, you're making us aware of it. Are you prepared to accept it? Is your recommendation that you should, that you're accepting it? Yes, our recommendation is to okay. accept it. Because even though I know when we were talking about this, the conversation is, it's not a vote for us that you all have the authority, and so this is more about courtesy. I'll, I'll back up a little bit. When we were picking different management companies, I remember in the conversation it was, yeah, you have these authorities, and, and but um, we, we would be part of the decision process that if we all thought, let's just say we all thought we thought this was a horrible idea, that you would listen to that, that you weren't coming here saying, so we've already accepted it and we wanted, and that, and what I'm hearing from you is you're not saying that. And so sometimes even though we have a contract and you can do whatever you wanted, I thought in the fine print, um, the, the handshake, and maybe that, that's not legal, so the attorney will just say, you can shake all the hands you want, but you all can do. But I thought in the spirit of sort of professionalism that, you know, 
that as these um, offers come in to you, you will come here and say, we're recommending approval. We have the authority to not even tell you and say yes, but we want you to know what's going on in the sports park. And having said that, then I just throw this out here as sort of playing devil's advocate. Is there any negative to sort of locking in with this one? So, you know, I, li I like the money amount and, and all that, but then there's also a stipulation that says it locks us out from many others. The company we've hired, you all have, um, have the expertise, you know, to, 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 to know the difference. I, I want to hear that you think, oh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's not we're not missing out on 30 other companies that, you know, possibly could come to us. This isn't sort of locking us in. Yeah, we get the 75 grand is what it is, 75,000, but also the fine print basically says, okay, now we can't negotiate with any other, you know, soccer firms or, or what have you, um, it, it, you know, educate us here. Does, is, is that not a concern? Uh, I will let Adrian uh, speak yeah. to the specifics of the contract. Thank you for the question, Adrian Moses. General Manager of the Paradise Coast Sports Complex. Um, we feel we did our due diligence. There are two major professional leagues in soccer. Um, we offered uh, an opportunity for both to provide bids to us. Uh, we made a decision which we felt was in the best interest of Collier County. Um, and honestly, the, the, the organization that gave us the best bid, um, the other bid was um, no, not, not detailed. Um, incorporated a lot of aspects of the, co the complex that we weren't prepared to share. Um, and um, now this, this was the best bid for us. And as kind of explained in the uh, executive summary, there's, there's no commitment right. to it. It's just giving them the opportunity to be able to go to a potential ownership group to see if there's interest out there. And if right. there isn't, there isn't. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Thank you, sir. Okay. You're welcome. Perfect. Commissioner Solis. Um, Okay, so can we, we should, I, I was just gonna say, if I was Adrian, <laughs> I can't imagine what my blood pressure would be because we have now talked about <laughs> canceling the, the agreement. <laughs> I mean, I mean this, this is, I think, a great opportunity uh, and for them to bring it to the board to keep us informed of one of the great things they're doing right. that's generating revenue essentially found money thanks for bringing it to us I mean I think it's a it's a great idea um, this will you know this is again in, in the in the realm of what for whatever it's worth because it's like my last meeting I mean selling the sports park sounds like insanity to me <laughs> but that's all I'm gonna say okay Commissioner Taylor so if my colleagues would just look on the last page of this document and what it says. What's the item number, the, the agenda? 16 F4. It says accepted and agreed, call your county, and it requires a signature that we accept it. I, when I read it, it didn't seem like it. It's information. Why, are we, why do we have to sign something that gives us information? So that's, that's why it's before us, because when I talked to C Deputy County Manager Rodriguez yesterday, he said, oh, no, no, no. He said, this, this is information, but it's between, it's between uh, United Soccer League and the county. And, I, and that's why there's the signature there. So I'm totally confused. And I, if I, I didn't me, draft this agreement to fight, all right, because this is not my client. If we sign it, if we don't sign it, it makes no difference. This contract would still be viable. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, that signature block might be there in error, correct? Just be, might be form. Yeah. Right. Mr. Uh, Chairman, if I could, for the record, part of the reason we brought this was for visib visibility to the board, um, because in the past we've had questions about sponsorships and things like that from the clerk. But as part of the original contract, from what I understand, and, and Marissa and, and the team can correct me, is that... Yes, they bring those proposals, but somebody in the county manager's office has to sign off, and that's the way it was set up uh, going back a year ago, so that we have visibility and we can see what they're signing over to uh, their partners, and uh, that's why you see our signature there. But it only goes to the county manager level, but out of professional courtesy to you, the board, visibility to the public, we brought it as an agenda item. 
Done. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Saunders, you got any? Yeah, just to, just real quickly. I, I certainly had no intention of indicating any desire to terminate any agreements. I was only pointing out that if something goes wrong, we're still in control. That's all. Uh, I think our management company is doing a great job, and I'm, I'm very pleased with that. I'm okay with this. But just for the board to know, if we do go to selling this at some point, which quite frankly will take us longer than a year anyway, uh, most likely, Number one. Uh, we're still in control. We're not giving up any control by right. saying, okay, that's fine, enter into the agreement. So I would make a motion, if there's one necessary, to just move on to the next agenda item. I think he already did that once. No, and we I approved it. So I think I, I pulled this, right? So now we just have to say we approve this as written because okay. I pulled it. We haven't right. took it away from the, uh, the okay. uh, That's agenda. True. It's been moved that we approve it as written. Yes. Right. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded that we approve it as written. All in favor? Aye. 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 Same uh, opposed, same sign, same sound. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Stay around for the rest of the conversation. <laughs> we, we, were, we were getting ready to prove to you that no good deed goes unpunished here. That's right. <laughs> Commissioners, that brings us to item 15, staff and commission general communications. 15A is public comments on general topics not on the current or future agenda by individuals not already heard during previous public comments in this meeting. We have no one registered at this time. Okay. Item 15B is staff and commission general communications. So we can start over here. I'll just do start with you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, first, uh, thank you to two more of our constitutional officers. Uh, you all received correspondence on their return of unused funds, both the clerk of courts and the sheriff. So thank you very much for that. You all received copies of these. If, if you did not, I can, I can provide you copies of those. I just wanted to extend a thank you to both the clerk and the sheriff for their ongoing partnership, and we will continue to work with them on, on their priorities and needs in the upcoming or in the current fiscal year. Uh, second is a thank you both to Commissioner Solis and Commissioner Taylor um, from all of the staff in the County Manager's Office. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you over the years uh, in all different uh, capacities, uh, particularly, I'll have to say it, attorneys cringing already in the back, but thank you for your support relative uh, to advancing our stormwater program. Um, it's, been, it's been really wonderful working with you. I'm, I'm sure Dan probably has some comments as well. I also, too, want to um, give accolades to uh, Commissioner Solis and Taylor for your commitment to public service here. Some of the legacy projects that you help champion um, truly have made our community um, a wonderful place that it is. And, uh, but also, each one of you have taken um, time to come and visit with staff out in the field, and uh, you've singled out staff on many occasions of their great work, and that really goes a long way to uh, helping us to um, promote and uh, create an environment that's professional and uh, we thank you for that. You know, Commissioner Solis, <laughs> he, was, he had baptism by fire in his district because of the uh, Naples Park uh, renovations of the water pipes and, and all the roads being torn up that are it's still happening. It's still going on. <laughs> so he, he definitely was out in the field. Yeah. <laughs> As for you and the Country Club of Naples, we're still uh, battling our way through that one as well. Yeah, but you know what? The water didn't get as far this time. It maybe. did not. No, it's working. Hello, everyone. Storm water works. When you update it and you fund it, it works. Infrastructure. Infrastructure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, last, I think I'm allowed to say for this Friday to all of our, um, our members that, that have served, Happy Veterans Day. Uh, to our staff members uh, that that serve to Commissioner LeCastro and and others thank you so much for your service and and enjoy enjoy the Friday well said well said that's all we have uh, county attorney uh, nothing sir thank you well let's start on my far right Commissioner Solis well uh, you know and kind of reflecting on what Commissioner Taylor just said um, wow <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the last six years, if you think about it. Been some. Irma? Pandemic? Two years of biblical red tide? <laughs> two years of pandemic? And now going out with another hurricane, it, it has been uh, uh, challenging. It's been but very, very rewarding. Uh, it's been an honor to serve with all of you. 
And uh, I think one of the things that's made it uh, both special and I think productive because of and all of the, the kind of legacy things that I think we've started is the civility that we all committed to every year. Uh, and I hope that that continues. I think it makes for better decisions, uh, better, uh, just a better process. And, and I think that's one of the things that, that, at least from my standpoint, has made the six years uh, such a wonderful thing to have experienced. So thanks to the staff. Uh, you know, you all are what I think makes the county great. Your commitment to hurricanes, uh, through hurricanes, through red tides, through, you know, the pandemic, uh, it, you're really the backbone of, of what Collier County is and, and, and what makes it great. So thank you for all of your commitment to the community. And uh, I, will, I will be around. Good. I'm not leaving the state, as there's, there's a rumor out there apparently that I'm leaving the state. I'm not leaving the state. I will be around and uh Mr. LoCastro said something about North Korea or something. Yes, I'm not I'm not moving to North Korea. Put it on either. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Facebook. So, okay, it's uh, it true. really it really has been a pleasure, Mr. Chair. Uh, Likewise, my friend. Mr. Saunders, uh, everybody, uh, it's it's really been a pleasure working with you all and uh, see you down the road. Look forward to it. Ride those conveyors. Yeah. I'm going to go to my far left. Commissioner Taylor. Oh, oh, me. Okay. So, first of all, I, I w this is just aside from, you know, the formal goodbye, and it's great to work with you. But it is. I'll miss you guys. Um, nice and I'll miss, I'll miss the, um, just the intellectual uh, demands of this job that uh, really puts you out front when you're, when you're up here and you, you have to make an argument. I've learned so much. That is one of the great things about this, this job. I have learned so much and learned from my colleagues. I've always said you always want attorneys on your, on your board. You always do because they'll talk this language and you'll look at them like, what are you speaking? But you kind of get into the, to the understanding that what we do is based on law. And it's very important to have that as a balance. Um, so. And, and to staff, wonderful support from staff. Anything that I, I take away from, from working as a commissioner is how supportive staff has been through these eight years that I've been here. Um, and what staff brings to, you know, you, you've picked strong leaders in this county and they bring a lot to the table and you work well together, so compliments on that. And all, along that note, I just, it's, a, it's an unsung division we don't talk about very much. But on our agenda here, under public utilities, under 16C1, we, uh, there were emergency hazard mitigation grant program that was mined and delivered. And we have 53 portable generators brought. And that's, that is money that, that th those grant folks are aggressive. They stay on it and they bring it to us. And where will we be in this hurricane without that kind of back backup? It's wonderful. So um, thank you for this privilege of serving this community and of being up here. And yeah, I'm not I'm not going to North Korea either. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to hang around here. And uh, uh, I, I look forward with great anticipation and enthusiasm on the future of this county. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. And speaking of intellectual challenging, Commissioner Saunders. Yeah, I, I've been intellectually challenged. I've, uh, I, uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, but I, that's what you meant. <laughs> um, first of all, I, I echo all the comments that have been made, especially those by Commissioner Locastro over the, over the weeks and months concerning our staff. Uh, I'm going to get into the commissioners in a minute, but I just didn't want it to go unsaid about how wonderful this job is as a commissioner, mainly because of how wonderful a job our manager and deputy manager and all the department heads back there and all the line staff that are out in the field on a day-by-day -day basis. If it wasn't for you guys, uh, this would be a very, very unpleasant place to be sitting. 
Uh, so I want to thank all of our staff for that. And then in terms of our, our commissioners, I really want to thank uh, uh, Commissioner Taylor and, and Commissioner Solis. It's been a pleasure working with you in my, if, for six years with uh, Commissioner Taylor and with the last six years uh, with um, Commissioner Solis. Um, I will miss both of you. Um, I, I will miss the conversation, the intellectual conversation, uh, and, um, and the decision making. I, I think that we've, the, as a board, have made very difficult decisions over the last six years. Uh, Commissioner Solis, you pointed out the, some of the challenges. Um, I think this commission and this county met all of those challenges, I think probably better than any other county in the state. When you look at uh, issues like Irma and Ian and the pandemic and red tide, all of those things. Uh, and I think that the board, uh, under your leadership and your leadership, uh, Commissioner Taylor and Commissioner Solis has, has really made some wonderful decisions for this community that I think we can all be proud of going forward. So thank you and best wishes for your continued involvement and in, uh, other activities. <laughs> Commissioner LeCastro. Well, I don't want to be a downer on the on the love fest. I'll, I'll have some of that to say, but I, I do have two pieces of business that you I, are going to be a downer. Yes, um, I asked the county manager that um, to have two folks from the staff come here because I have some questions on two things. So, um, Jacob um, Laroe, if he could come forward, I have a question for you about affordable housing, and then Jamie Cook is going to give us all a, an update on the rock crushing lot, so we can go on the record and um, we've seen some of the emails. But Jacob, just just real quick, um, and then and then I have some closing comments. But I think this is this, these are two important important things. So we voted on the 60-day um, rental notice ordinance um, half a dozen times, and it was a very volatile issue, passed three to two and whatever, okay, and I'm a, I'm a big supporter of whether you vote for something or not. In the end, it's one decision, one voice, and we want it to be successful. You know, that's how democracy works. But what I want to know from you is, so everybody cheered that it got passed. What have we done since the day we voted on it and it passed? And you know, what has how how how, how have we done anything? How, what has it accomplished? How have we gotten the word out there um, to uh, to have it have the success that those who supported it strongly hoped it would have? And I realize it wasn't going to be over an overnight thing, but I just wanted an update on has anything happened? <laughs> have we done anything? Uh Thank you for the question, Commissioner LoCastro. Jacob Leroux, your Director of Economic Development and Housing, for the record. Uh, to your question, Commissioner, um, no. I've, me personally, my division has not taken any uh, concrete, explicit steps. Um, and, and in fact, uh, I, I believe the ordinance took effect uh, October 28th uh, of last month. Uh, that's an, a, its adoption. I know uh, Elizabeth Raddy, who spoke earlier today uh, during public comment, I provided that ordinance to her because she had a question on that. Um, and so I, I'll, based on your question and anticipating uh, future action, I will um, work with Christy Sontag with the Community Human Services Department to make sure that that notice um, and that information is available. I do know, I, I believe I received an email uh, this morning that the Muni Code had been updated um, incorporating that ordinance, so that will be accessible um, through the internet, through those searches. But um, uh, to answer your question, nothing specifically, but we'll yeah, and I and I only say this because um, whether I was for or against it, now that it's passed, we have to do something aggressive to get the word out. Because where we open ourselves up for legal problems is if a landlord didn't get the word, um, you know. And I realize ignorance isn't a defense, but they might have a little bit of a defense if they say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I missed the one website where it was hung. I didn't realize." You know. So I mean, I, I don't know what the steps are, but the folks that were screaming that if they didn't have it, everybody would be sleeping in their cars. I think they're looking for some, us to. Have have done something. Um, so I don't know what the other counties did that got it out there, and some of them got it out there with sort of mixed responses. But um, you know, if, if it's going to have the success it is supposed to have by those who pushed hard for it, we have to have done something. And I realize, like you said, it's still very new. But um, I mean, I take this as a task or direction. And then please keep us posted, because this was a hot topic. And there were people that you know were um, certain that if we passed it, 
it was going to be an amazing thing. So, you know, I'd look for, I'd like for, to, for continued updates on that. Yes, sir. Um, and then, you know, Jamie, I know that, you know, on the rock crushing lot, give us a short version, but I know you've done a lot. And I also really appreciate the, um, the folks from, uh, um, uh, zoning and the, or our ordinary, our permitting folks and who have been watching that lot daily. And we have 200 sets of citizen eyes that are also watching it and sending us videos. Tell us the short version of what's going on out there and the progress that they've made. Uh, Jamie Cook, your Director of Development Review at Growth Management. Um, so for the last two weeks, they have been doing the densifying activities. They've been separating the scrap metal, the rebar, the wood, anything construction and demolition debris that can't be crushed um, from the rocks that have been on site. That's continued to be ongoing. Um, they assembled the crusher last Tuesday, so it was officially assembled. Um, and since last Tuesday, they have crushed approximately 3,600 cubic yards of rock on the site. Um, they've put in about 212 man hours with the work that they've done so far. Um, Commissioner, I know you did ask in an email yesterday um, about an estimate of the amount of rock on site. And that's one thing that's been very, very difficult to determine from the get-go of this. And I did reach out to Earth Tech, the contractor for this site, but they haven't been able to estimate that I guess, yet. I guess what we're saying <laughs> in the other meeting is, and, and it's, we're trying to extrapolate, okay, if they crushed 3,600 cubic yards and, you know, they had a roughly X number, you know, you try to do the algorithm and say, are they on, are they on some sort of timeline? Is that a big number? Is 3,600 cubic yards a lot, you know? And, and if the answer was, well, they only have 40,000 cubic yards. We think, wow, they've already, they're already into a 10%. But if we hear that there's 600,000 cubic yards, then we sit here and do the math and go, man, we're going to be sitting here in this meeting in April, and it's going to be a, a, a real um, battle with citizens and whatnot. So um, anyway, as you continue to get those, I mean, I, and, I, and I didn't expect that, that somebody would know the figure, but hopefully they can, they can guesstimate it a little bit um, in the next few weeks as they kind of make progress and get their arms around it, and then just continue to keep us you know, posted as, as you have been. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, and then, and just so everybody knows too, from my understanding, the water they've been using properly. Um, do we know if they... Um, put up the silt fence a little bit better? Did they pull the weeds? You know, things like that. Those were some of the little aesthetic things that we did hear a lot of complaints about. Do we know, are they, is some of that stuff in order? I, I didn't go by the lot this week, so I didn't get a, a visual myself, but I don't, I don't know if they made those improvements. I, I believe that they have. Um, I've had three, basically three different inspectors going by three different times a day to check on the progress, making sure that they're following all of our rules, and we have not received any complaints or had any causes for concern at this okay. point. Thank you, ma'am. You're can welcome. I follow, can I follow up just real quick? Because this is what I do. So uh, it's running about 17 tons an hour for the man hours attributable. And now is that an aggregate of man hours? I want to know the crushing hours, the hours that the machine actually operated, and there is an hour meter on the machine, I promise. Okay. That I can find out for you. Well, yes, you can. And then number two, I want to know the size, the length of the property, east and west, and and what 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 the what the diameter of the property is, or the 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 entire the entire uh, property boundary. And then you estimate the height of that, and that will give you a, an idea as to the volume of material that's in there that in fact needs to be crushed. Then you can apply, and it's an estimate because yeah. it, it varies from place to place. But then you can apply that to the hourly uh, rate with which they're crushing. The 212 man hours attributable right now may have been set up in MOBE and all of the things, mobility, that, that for bringing in the crusher and getting it set up and going. So find out what the hours of operation are in relationship to the tonnage that's crushed. And then you can extrapolate the volume that's on the estimate the volume that's on the process or on the property and apply it to that and then we can make decisions with the regard to hours of operation and what they're in fact doing and that would give you a far closer estimate and, and that was the reason i asked I, I didn't think the county staff would know but this company would know they, they know how to do the math and, and figure depth and height and width and, and all of that in hours and to give us a guesstimate and then those numbers become a lot tighter and more accurate the further we get you know into this um, and, and we can also see adjustments so let's um, demand those um, algorithms you know out of them because um, what is it e ecotech Earth tech. Earth, tech. Earth tech, I'm sorry. Um, they really should. They should know. He's they should a really know. good operator. Yeah, and they are. Yeah, so they should know. So. Um, 
you know, let, let them know that at this meeting we were, you know, asking for those numbers because it matters to us to see if we think they're on point, on track. And, and also, too, I want to know that they're doing the math. They're not just sort of doing the best they can, and then they're sitting here in April, you know, saying, anyway, but thank you. Um, now, you know, my closing comments um, here on that, those are the two things, so I'll look for the updates from you, Jacob, as well. Um, Amy, I uh, really want to thank you for, at, at all of these meetings since you've been the county manager, um, it's been very obvious that in the read-aheads, the, the um, hyperlinks and the agenda, there's much more detail in there. I think the reason why we, we all don't have a lot more questions is, you know, the PowerPoint briefings are in there. And, you know, I just remember from two years ago, my first couple of meetings, th there weren't as, as many sometimes or as, as many valuable um, things to click on. So I think it's obvious you're meeting with the staff, preparing us much more. And whether we look at it or not, I think the staff providing it to you and making sure that it's in the agenda is, is making us all, uh, you know, have a much um, more valuable experience and get a lot more detail. So I just wanted to say it, thank you for that. It, it's very noticeable. It's very noticeable. Um, last two things I'll just say, it is appropriate to say Happy Veterans Day. It's never appropriate to say Happy Memorial Day. And to this veteran, it's never appropriate to sell mattresses for a cheaper price on either holiday. So I, I, I take great offense to that, you know. But um, if you do see a veteran, and I know we have a lot on the staff, it, Veterans Day is a time to honor the service of anyone who has worn the uniform. Memorial Day isn't. Um, so you never say happy Memorial Day, but happy Veterans Day is something that everybody um, appreciates. And, and to my colleagues, you know, Commissioner Taylor and Commissioner Solis, I, I would just say um, I didn't have the pleasure to serve with you as long as the others. But I would say it's really it's not about if you run or not. And it's not about if you win or not. It's about serving and you both have served, and there's a lot of folks out there that point a lot of fingers to government, whether it's at the county level, uh, state, or national, but they never, they don't step forward to serve. Um, they would just want to critique, and so I really applaud and salute anybody who decides to serve, and um, you both have, and so I thank you for your service. And uh, last but not least, it'll be me. And, and oh boy. yeah, well, uh, you know, one of the motion to adjourn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got we got to do the we got to do the gorilla in the room first, and let's let's go ahead and do that. Uh, Commissioner Taylor was kind enough to pass out this letter that we all got yesterday. Uh, we have received a letter of interest from a purchaser for the sports park, and um, typically. Uh, when someone makes an unsolicited offer for a piece of property that the government owns, we at least do some exploration to make a determination as to whether there's validity uh, in the transaction. And so my, my proposition or suggestion is, is that we do pursue this at least uh, from the beginning to, to start the process. We, we went through a similar circumstance in Immokalee when we uh, approved the sale of a CRA piece of property in Immokalee from, from the uh, Catholic Charities and an unsolicited offer and there is a we have a process for this and irrespective of whether you feel it's a good idea or a bad idea we really can't ascertain whether it's a good idea or a bad idea until we move to level two or three and so my suggestion is is that we move on with this in in our normal processes and uh, See, make a decision from a business perspective. Commissioner Taylor. Um, I'm not, I mean, I think, I think that's a fair thing to do. I don't know what this board is going to decide to do, but I do think, sir, that you are uh, uniquely positioned to lead that no. from the commission only because uh, you, under, you, you know, your background is real estate and it's your district. Yes. <laughs> Well, it's mine and Bert's now, but we'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll share it with Commissioner Saunders. But I, and I, I'd be happy to lead it, at least get it to the next step. I mean, this is all, all this is is a happy letter that says, hey, we're interested in a piece of property that you own. Um, so, and I'm not, I'm not being frivolent about that. I'm, I'm actually just saying this, this is a nice letter from somebody that says they're interested in buying it. And, and I don't think it's prudent for us to just say no without at least taking it to the next level and seeing if there's any, any viability to it. Um, I, I think what I would suggest is we've had this discussion, staff, um, go take a look at it, uh, do research on the entity, 
have some meetings with them, see what what they're thinking, get get it get it started, and then at some point, I think then we would need to we may need to appoint Commissioner McDaniel to lead some negotiations. But I think prior to that, the staff just go explore what who they are and what they're thinking. Sure. That's fine too. I, and the statute requires a fee, so work with my office because we're not doing this work without generating some sort of revenue before we do it. What? The, the statute for an unsolicited proposal, which is supposed to, there's a fee involved for having staff do the due diligence to see whether or not this is something they want to do. And we don't need a fee. I'll just do it to get it to the next level and then we'll go. I, I don't remember have, having to charge a fee for an unsolicited offer. Statute? There's a lot of, there's a big difference between a piece of land that we're going to sell to a church and something like this. Uh, if you're going to sell the sports park, we're, it's... Uh, you know, all we're looking to do right now is have staff communicate with the potential buyer and, great. and just see what they're thinking. If there's a statutory issue, I'd like to get us a copy of the statute so we, at least we know what we're talking about there. But we're, we're not talking about staff doing a whole lot of research or anything right now. Just go talk to the folks. I actually, see what they're thinking about. Before we had this discussion, I actually even, when, when, when Amy shared this with me yesterday, I was just like, have the guys call me. Because I, I, can, I can get through a lot over a phone call just in, in, uh, to, to ascertain whether there's any value in, in even bringing it forward to the board. And the board would ultimately make the decision, please, but I can, I can be the one because they, they can do that preliminary stuff, Commissioner Saunders, if you're okay with that. I, I, again, I think the best thing is for County Manager Patterson to assign somebody from her staff to talk to these folks and see what they're thinking about. To have you call right now, I think, is premature. I think we just just see what, what, what they're even thinking. Um, that, that's my view. Because I think we're, we're elevating this to a discussion where we're not at that point. We just, we just really need to see I know means. what. Well, and that was the... If, and the if, if there is a statute that requires a fee for staff involvement, then I'll be happy to do it because I'm free. I, I'm, I'm a phone call away with free. regard. To, yeah, well, inexpensive. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't have to have a fee to, to get it to a point where we could make a legible decision and then pass it off to staff with a because then there would be an actual letter of intent and uh, deposits and things. So. Yeah, I, I think now I may have to disagree with you. I don't really want the chairman of the commission contacting these folks right now to see what they're talking about. Let's get some information about who they are and, and what they're proposing or have some general conversations. But when you get involved in it, that, that really raises it to a level that I don't think we're ready to do that yet. Okay. I mean, that, that's just my personal view. I, I you know, if, if, if uh, the commission said, uh, Commissioner Saunders, we'd like you to talk to these folks, I, w I would say, well, wait a minute, I, I, a little bit of research has to be done as to what we're, we're talking about, I think. I, this is, I mean, everybody realized this is the company that bought FBU. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I agree. I think let the staff do it first and, and down with that. Bring something back. Totally us. fine with that, too. I didn't realize there was a fee associated with it, so we'll it, worry about that fee one day. When, if, if I if I may, we can do that preliminary work, um, have a conversation. You, do a little bit of research. Background to make sure there's enough there's enough right. wherewithal. We also have to you know deal with some of the the financial strings that are attached to this property. But at the point that they're ready to, if they get to a point where they and we are interested in a letter of intent, or even if they are and we aren't, maybe the time then we address those statutory issues that Jeff's. So this we'll, we'll just look at this as um, simply they sent us this letter and we'll do a little fact finding and report back to you. Fair enough. But yes, ma'am. Are you done? No. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. I have one more question. Well, just go on ahead. You want to? Okay. So I understand our governor has said, in fact, I got a postcard to the effect that if I have damage from Hurricane Ian in my home, the property taxes might be deferred. And I'm wondering if our deputy county manager Finn knows anything about that I don't think the governor can do that can he uh, mr. chairman commissioner um, I'm happy to step up here and tell you that I, I really have no information on that okay yeah. certainly if that becomes a reality we'll, we will 
uh, report to the board any implications of that relative to our finances and certainly if it benefits the taxpayers would provide that information as well um, there is uh, some uh, I believe there is uh, potentially a deferral of the discount period uh, I believe that that if not a done deal is close to a done deal um, but that in and of itself is is primarily a cash flow issue I mean, it does provide the taxpayer with a little more time to pay their bill and, and do so with the uh, with the full discount. I, the way so I understood that's it. the deferral they're it, talking about. I, I believe that's the case, and, and I'm I'm speaking uh, normally out of school at the moment. Uh, I'm I'm not 100% certain of that, but uh, the tax collector and I have, have talked about this, and uh, I've talked to the, uh, some of the clerks people. But um, I'm going to check on that for you, and I will send you an email to see what the status of that Thank is. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And last but not least, uh, thank you. It's been a pleasure serving with you for six years, and you as well. You, uh, um, as, as Commissioner Taylor said, it's an interesting experience uh, just learning this, uh, the process of decision-making by committee. It's a, it's a different process than my other lives uh, that I have, and uh, I, it, it's been enjoyable. And the lessons that have been learned on the different perspectives that have been brought forward based upon your thoughts and your knowledge and how you ha uh, would, would have managed things is, uh, has, has been enlightening to me. And I just want to say thank you to you both. And as Com Commissioner LaCastro said, it's uh, not about the election or not, it's about the service. And I truly believe that that's why we're all here. So from me to you, thank you, and I wish you well. And for the greater good, we are adjourned.